The albino squirrel at the University of North Texas is the unofficial mascot for UNT, and therefore a valued member of our community. The albino squirrel has for more than a decade been a rising trend in unofficial mascots all over the United States, but recently we have seen a spike in colleges claiming them as their mascot. I'd heard about it at orientation, and then uh, some people in my dorm had heard about it. No, I haven't seen it in years. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> There's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if you see the albino squirrel, you're supposed to get an A on your test. It's supposed to be a, an omen of good luck. I heard that if you see it after a test, it means you got a good grade. At UNT, we might not claim the albino squirrel is our mascot, but we do consider it unofficially a mascot we are fond of. This has led to a lineage of white squirrels spanning the past 15 years, while there have also been clubs formed around little white critters on campus. There have been four white squirrels in total. Thelonious, first spotted in 2000, Baby, spotted in 2004, but killed in 2006 by a Red Hawk. We told you earlier this week about the passing of a popular face on the University of North Texas campus. It wasn't a student or a professor, but an unofficial mascot, a wild albino squirrel. The Why Guy went to Denton to find out how people are saying goodbye. Sometimes life isn't fair, and the students at the University of North Texas find themselves in the middle of learning that lesson. Deeply sad. This isn't a story about an albino squirrel as much as it is a story about who he touched. Figuratively, you don't want to touch a squirrel really for fear of rabies. From what I hear, a hawk attacked him. Um, I know it's the natural order of things, but it was still unfortunate for us. Um, swooped down, tried to pick him up. He passed on. This is T.J. Zimbrano, the president of the Albino Squirrel Preservation Society. He assures me his studies come first. Well, some called him Lucky, some called him Whitey, but those who weren't sure who he was called him the ghost of the trees. But The squirrel became so much a part of this society, they decided to do this. But um, he made a difference. Hold a memorial, a full service, complete with laughter and memories. Are you crying? Yeah. <laughs> people loved him. They'd seen, you know, people that had seen him before as well were thinking, oh, I've seen that thing. Yeah. Nut. <laughs> okay. uh, so just off Chestnut Street on a campus whose mascot is an eagle where normally no one would give a hoot about a dead squirrel, somehow this one made an impact on humans. And maybe that's reason enough to wish the little fellow well. But uh, it's good to be here. I took a day off work for this and uh, this has definitely been worth it. So, uh, <laughs> Lucky you're going to be missed. In Denton, Mike Castellucci, Channel 8 News. I have a story idea or a comment for Mike, send an email to whyguy at wfaa.com. As Troy just mentioned, it would have been appropriate really to just fade to black here. Yes, well, you, you know. To continue on. It's a tough moment, but I think they'll persevere. I really do. I think you they'll know, persevere. An albino mm -hmm. squirrel is a hard thing to find, though. I don't think he'll ever be replaced. Oh, you can't replace an albino squirrel. Say goodnight, Macy. But his memory will live on. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Baby's Baby in 2007, and most recently, a smaller albino squirrel in 2008. One of the best ways to describe where white squirrels come from is the white squirrel phenomenon, a video documenting Rob Nelson's journey across the United States, where he analyzed multiple white squirrel foundings and basically broke down where these white squirrels come from and why. White, white squirrels. squirrels. You see, five years ago, I was out in the neighborhood milling around and I saw this. I was like, holy moly, that's a white squirrel. And I had never seen a white squirrel. It was pretty cool. And now I'm a little bit of an expert on white squirrels. So um, here's their story. So at first I was like, what's up with this white squirrel? So of course I did a little research online and I found that there's, and I found that there's a few towns across North America that claim to be the home of the white squirrel. Everybody has an idea of where their white squirrels come from. <laughs> one town they apparently came off of a circus truck. Uh, one town was a bad scientist. 
Um, and then one town was just some crazy guy out in the woods that was breeding them. And now that actually brought up a lot of questions. So my research continued. I visited museums. I looked at the pelts um, from squirrels all over the country. I talked to other biologists. And I wrote an online article telling people to send me their white squirrel sightings. In the end, I got over a thousand different reports. And you can only imagine how many cool sightings I was able to see from people all over the country. Now the interesting thing is when I analyze the data. You see, what I thought was going to happen is that these white squirrel sightings uh, were basically going to um, radiate out from these white squirrel towns, right? Turns out this white squirrel phenomenon was pretty randomly distributed across the country, all covering the range of the eastern gray squirrel. But here are some of the neat things I found. First, 80% of the squirrels were white morphs. The rest are actually albinos with red eyes. Next, there's a white morph of the fox squirrel. And every so often there is just a crazy mix of white squirrels that have crazy coat patterns that I just cannot explain. So the albino squirrel is a valued member of our community and a pretty rare species at that. So next time you see it, say hello and wish yourself good luck on that exam you're about to ace.